The food webs in the Ross Sea are incredibly complex. Um, even though the diversity of some of the midwater organisms is lower than you get elsewhere in the world, the actual characteristics are still very complex. And the benthic fauna in Antarctica are probably as diverse as anywhere else in the world. So a lot of the uh, animals in Antarctica have developed unique strategies to cope with the short uh, production and the long periods of darkness, the long periods of low food availability. Uh, so some of the animals migrate out of the area, uh, travelling huge distances to, to, for other uh, feeding or, or breeding grounds. Some animals uh, build up food reserves during the, during the summer period, which they then use over the year. And other animals change their lifestyle over the course of the year to feed in different areas or, or go into periods of low energy usage to, to manage to maintain themselves through the whole year. Uh, there's also the factor that uh, Antarctica is, is disconnected. A lot of the, sh the shallower waters around Antarctica are disconnected from the shallower waters in other parts of the world, which has allowed the, the fauna, the animals in Antarctica, to develop in ways which are different from animals in other parts of the world. So you tend to have a very high proportion of animals which are endemic, which only exist in the Antarctic, uh, compared to other areas. The classical picture is that uh, krill, uh, Antarctic krill, Euphorsia superba, dominates a lot of the midwater food webs of the Southern Ocean. There's also a lot of uh, mctophids, particular mctophid, uh, small midwater fish species living in the deeper waters around the Southern Ocean. Um, when you move on to the shelves, the, the shelf regions of Antarctica are very unlike uh, shelf regions in other parts of the world. The Ross Sea and the Weddell Sea are the two large shelf areas um, and they're unusual in many ways. Uh, they're unusual in that they're, they're quite deep for a continental shelf at 500 to 800 metres uh, compared to 300 metres uh, or less than 300 metres elsewhere in the world. They also have uh, very unique uh, ecosystems and organisms that live there that don't live anywhere else in the world. Uh, very important amongst those are Antarctic silverfish. Uh, Pleurogramma antarctica. They're a small midwater fish, um, 10 centimetres or up to, up to maybe 20 centimetres long, and they really are the, the heart of the food webs over the shelves in the Southern Ocean. Some of the main uh, uh, changes that are happening in the areas like the Ross Sea are um, due to fishing, so due to human activities in the area. In the Ross Sea, there's a, a recently developed fishery for Antarctic toothfish. Um, Antarctic toothfish is, is the top fish predator uh, in the Southern Ocean. Um, further north away from the Antarctic continent, Patagonian toothfish dominates, but the, the, re the furthest south uh, dominant fish predator is Antarctic toothfish. This is a, a two meter long fish um, with some very unusual physiological characteristics. And that really is the only predator of that size um, in, amongst the fish community. So that probably exerts quite an important effect on the, on the prey items below it, the medium-sized demersal fishes like the ice fish and the rat tails that live along the continental slope areas in particular. So we've got to look at um, what effect uh, removing a proportion of the toothfish population from an area like the Ross Sea has on the associated species. So for example, Will, take, will reducing the abundance of toothfish in the area change the dynamics amongst the prey uh, fish? Will it change the abundance or the relationships between rat tails and ice fish and their prey? And then we've got to look at whether it'll have uh, larger effects. So will uh, fish, the fishery on Antarctic toothfish, does that have the potential to change the abundance of silverfish in the Ross Sea? Silverfish is is very important to understand any effects on, on that species because it's, it's the main prey item for a lot of the top predators including the Adelie penguins and the Emperor penguins, um, some of the seals, the Weddell seals, uh, maybe even the crab eater seals. Um, it's also a prey item for a lot of the fish in the community. So really we've got to be very careful about any, effect, any, any human activities that might affect uh, Antarctic silverfish in the region.